What's up everyone? I am Dave Atkinson from Drumio.com and I'm here with Nate Savage from Guitario.com. Yeah. We got a really special treat for everyone today. We are doing our very first live band performance with very special guests JP Bouvet, Asher, and Jed. We are, well you guys are, Childish Japes. Thanks for coming in, guys. Our pleasure. Thanks Thank you for us. having us. Yeah, yeah. We filmed a lot of courses and a lot of lessons with uh, this band and these, these guys here on guitarlessons.com and on drumby.com as well. But we wanted to do something special and have them perform for us, obviously, but also you guys as well. So it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. So what they're going to do is just, we're going to cut them loose. They're going to play some songs, maybe in some improvs. And then uh, you can submit your questions, members. We'll get the, to those as many as we can yep. afterwards if we have time. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Enjoy the set, and uh, like I said, if you guys do have questions, get them. And we'll try to get to as many as we can. But I also want to see you guys play a lot. So, uh, but before I get into it, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and um, tell us where you're from? Uh, I'm Asher Kurtz. Uh, we all live in New York City, but I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Um, and I played a few different bands, Childish Japes being one of them, and uh, also Iris and as well. I'm JP. I play in Childish Japes, and I'm from Minnesota, but I live in New York. Awesome. I'm Jed Lingett. Uh, I'm just a freelance musician around the city of New York, so. Very cool. Well, let's get into it, guys. Take it away. All right. Thank you. 
We are Childish Shapes. Uh, we're going to play a few songs. That first one was off our first album that we just put out. It's called After You're Born. You can find it where you find music. And uh, this band is really, really focused. There's, there's a huge emphasis on creating and improvising and sort of worshiping the creative process throughout all of that. So we want to, instead of just playing you a bunch of songs that we already know and are really good at playing, um, we're going to put ourselves out there, take some risks, and we want to play a couple songs that we are working on for our second album. And we want to, you know, at some point after this next song, we'll just do a full improv as well. So, yeah, again, that first song is called Gorba's. This next one's called Please Explain, and it should be on the second album. Am I missing anything? All right, then. Let's do it. <laughs> Go for it, Asher.
I think I should say thank you, but there's a good chance that no one is sitting alone in the room applauding that. Right? <laughs> I caught, my, I caught myself once. I caught myself once watching a live DVD and alone in my basement, <laughs> clapping. I was like, what are you doing? Oh. There's a lot of people watching live right now, and they're pumped. They love it. So, oh, yeah. great, cool, man. Very cool. You sound great. All right, uh, we're just gonna make some stuff up here on the spot now. Cool. Awesome. Thank you.
Do you guys seriously just make that up on the spot right now? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, You're yeah. kidding. <laughs> that was a journey. Insane. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there was an audience <laughs> test there at some point. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next is Seed 73. Cool. Next is another 2B song on our upcoming album. Um, it is and what's interesting, if you listen to the band, any of the music, well, half the music on the first album, you'll hear singers. We featured a lot of singers on the album. And on the next album, we are also featuring one singer in particular, Dave Vivas. Um, so some of these songs will have vocals on them, but even the songs with vocals on them, we, we are really proud of and we really love the instrumental parts, so sort of not afraid to play them. They, they don't feel like fully empty without the vocals. In my opinion, IMO. But uh, yeah, so this is one that we've been working on. It obviously doesn't have a name because it's still called Seed 73. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'll get there. That one?
Thanks. All right, we got one more. This song is actually also on the first album. It's called After You're Born. It's the title track, and it features on the album, obviously not here, a singer named Courtney Swain. He was a real badass, let me tell you. Uh, she's in a band called Bent Knee, which is just an incredible band worth looking up. So, yeah, she's super cool. Uh, I guess before this last song, it's been a real honor to play for all of you. Yeah. It's, it's super cool that, that anyone, let alone several people, are tuned in. So thank you, Dromeo, for having us. It's been an awesome couple of days here filming content for the website and doing some live shoots and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I guess this is officially the biggest show we've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Even though there's no one in this room, but there's thousands of yeah, people yeah. watching live. Yeah, it's 2017, I guess. Right. Uh, so yeah, this next song is called After You're Born. Wow! Good job, guys. Thanks. That was insane. Thanks. That sounded so good. <laughs> I mean, I've listened to you guys perform over the last couple of days while we were filming, but you guys just really let loose there. It was awesome. 
Yeah. We're finally comfortable <laughs> in the Drumeo studio, man. <laughs> yeah, you're like home away from home here. <laughs> That's the way we got to do it, hey? Just do the performance at the end. Yeah. Uh, but seriously, great job. I had tons of people watching live just saying how good it sounded. Cool. People who had never heard of you before say they're now on my playlist. Awesome. A couple people from Australia saying, hey, they're coming to Australia soon. Yeah. I'm coming to see you guys. Ooh, see you soon. <laughs> so, yeah, Sweet. thank you so much. Very cool. What do you think? Uh, it's, I Obviously, all you guys can't be in the room, but it's different being in the room. <laughs> just filling the drums and you know have the guitars coming through my ears. It's really nice. Yeah, love it. Yeah, it sounded really good. So you guys did a great job. And again, thank you all for coming all this way from New York to Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, to do this kind of stuff. It's uh, it means a lot to us. My yes. pleasure. Yeah. And for those of you guys wondering right now, uh, um, you know, hey, if you're watching this from Guitario or GuitarLessons.com. Uh, you might think, hey, well, what's going on here? If you guys are watching this from Drum, you might think, what's going on here? We usually do lessons, educational lessons, but what we're doing a lot more now is trying to find a way to get more education in a musical setting. And uh, no better way to do that than in a band. Whether you're playing guitar, piano, or drums, you know, the end goal of being a musician is to play music yeah. and to play in a band. So uh, that's why we brought you guys out. And um, this is our first ever live performance um, that we streamed, and I think it did really well. So. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through just a couple questions that we have for you guys to pick your brains a bit. And we also are going to take some questions from you guys watching out there. We might not get to all of them, but uh, hey, submit and we'll see what happens. Yeah, is that cool? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. So the first question that I have is, uh, how did you guys meet and start this band to begin with? Well, uh, we all went to school together uh, in Boston. And um, we played a little bit there, but once we all moved to New York, um, you know, JP had been doing a bunch of clinic tours and things, and he was like, you know, I really want to focus more on, like, writing my own music and, and maybe starting uh, a project of my own instead of playing in other people's projects. And so he contacted me, and I had, I had worked with JP um, on some of my own music in my other band, Iris Loon. He recorded on our first EP, which is a really incredible experience. Um, and after that, we, we did, like, a quick tour uh, to Istanbul together, which also made us a lot closer. And just realized we had a really cool musical chemistry, and um, so we started doing like some duo jams, and we were like, who could we possibly bring in on bass that would fill it out? And Jed was like the clear decision. We're like, what about, like, no, he won't wanna. But what about, you know, <laughs> Jed, no, he won't wanna. Yeah. <laughs> Jed's kinda in high demand, so. Yeah, yeah really I can see, I can see why. <laughs> Very cool, so y'all just met at Berkeley and took it from there. Yeah, essentially. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I have a question I've been wanting to ask you guys all week. I can't, I can't believe it hasn't come up, but we've been doing a little bit more you know, pertinent and important stuff. But somebody <laughs> mentioned in the chat, CJ Fowler in the chat in the members area mentioned it. Where'd you get the name from? Travis Japes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a little bit controversial name there. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, it came, I mean, we were brainstorming names for a while. <clears throat> Too long. I really loved Travis Japes from the beginning. Took a little time for for Jen and Azure to, you know, get on board with it, but <laughs> it makes sense. Everyone we say it to, they're like, "What? Travis James? Travis Games? Travis what?" Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jape is a, an older word for a joke. Hmm. Travis Japes, and it kind of like uh, the idea for me came from two places. One from <laughs> one one from my uh, favorite character in one of my favorite books, uh, is, is "Fool" by Christopher Moore. And it went, so one party is like, I'm but a wan and wafty crafter of japes. And I was like, ah, what the hell's a jape? And I was, I had the same branch and everyone else. Um, so that was one thing. I just, I just loved that, the way it was used. And then uh, also, this was like when the band was sort of like before we really formed, but it was kind of an idea. And I was thinking like, maybe these guys want to play with me and start a band. And, um, <laughs> during that time, I was doing a lot more like... Uh, Meditation. I was. I'd go to the park every morning and sit, and uh, it was like kind of a dark time, I guess, mentally for me. And I was thinking, like, man, what is missing in my life? And it was. And I was just realizing that, like, that childish creation, that energy, that just like you know, kids just let loose, and they don't. They don't think like someone's gonna judge this. They don't think like, mm -hmm. you know, I need to fit in some rules. They just start playing with some stuff. They start yeah. imagining stuff, and they just run rampant. And that's it. That's the, the, the end game, right? There's no final judging, if you will, um, which is really hard to escape in a community of young musicians trying to make it in the heart, you know, like in a huge city like New York, where mm -hmm. there's so much competition. So that's where I, I was, I really wanted it to be Childish Japes 
even though I knew it was kind of a bad logistical name, because it meant something to me that was really important. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's where the name comes from. So we, we're trying to always, you know, like I said, like we're trying to really always be, instead of just playing songs that we've, you know, gotten really good at playing, you know, that always becomes easy no matter how hard these songs are. Um, we're trying to just create in the moment and we try to have some improv in all of our shows. And yeah, that, that's it. It's, it's, this band is basically like a creative safe space to like anything goes. I love it. So subsequent yeah. albums, like they might be totally unrelated to anything we've ever done. And we really just aren't going to care. <laughs> well, definitely comes across just in, in, in the way you guys interact with each other. I mean, we've ha hung out with you for the last couple of days now, and you guys get along so well, and it, it, you have this, um, that connection in the music, in the, in the band space, too, like in the rehearsal space. And even here, it's like it's, you can see it. It's great. So very cool. Um, so Childish Japes, where can people find your music? How can they connect with you? How can they follow you? Let everyone know. I mean, we're on any place that you can stream music. Uh, you know, you can buy it on iTunes. Um, yeah, we're all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All the usual suspects. Cool. <laughs> cool. One question that I have for you that I kind of want to clarify for people, just because with this band, it's probably not like it is with a lot of other bands that you may listen to on the radio or just sure. in general. And that's just your writing process. I mean, I kind of... I've experienced you guys just experimenting and improving and coming up with stuff on the spot this week. Mm -hmm. Is that how you normally come up with your music, or do you like have an idea, JP or Jed, and then you bring it to the table? What's that look like for you? Did you just imply that we're not radio friendly? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <Ooh>. No. <laughs> no. I never um, would have guessed. Well, I think it's it's kind of a combination of both. Like, uh, you know, sometimes we write things when we're just kind of like grooving out, like getting into yeah. rehearsal. You know, we have some things that we need to run for sure, but um, sometimes, you know, we just like really lock into something like, in fact, the first, like one of the first groups we did when we were warming up here yesterday, yep. uh, we ended up turning into like a new song <laughs> that we're probably going <laughs> to put on really the next good. album too. Which, oh, cool. It's just really fun to be open to that kind of writing process. But um, also I was, I was just in Istanbul for a month and we weren't together obviously for, for that. Um, I was doing some teaching out there, but I brought my entire like producing rig, you know, my MIDI controller, my synths, um, and and my guitar, obviously. And so I, you know, I just opened up Logic, and you know, we have this Australian tour coming up, and we needed to really crank out some music because it's coming up real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just started sending out some ideas that I had, and um, a lot of like the main things that we've done so far. One of the songs that we played earlier, uh, please explain. Um, is a seed from that, and also that seed seventy three uh, is another one um, that I had sent out that we just kind of like eventually got together and rearranged something. And sometimes that happens when uh, I'll send an idea and then JP will like record iPhone drums. Mm -hmm. He was in China for <laughs> for a lot of that beginning, um, so it's cool to be able to send each other stuff and also be able to write that way. You know, very so. cool. Hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll hear that improv tune you did uh, just now on an album coming up, too, because that was sure. great. Yeah, yeah. We, we've written <laughs> potentially like three songs since we got here yesterday. That's so. amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so, so cool. I was, I was cranking them out. Yeah, that's a healthy band right there. <laughs> yeah. um, here's a question for you. While you guys were here, I noticed you guys were all, first off, um, talking a lot very musically, not just about your own instrument, but uh, you guys all have a pretty good understanding of other people's instruments. And I saw, Jed, you sat on the drums and you just killed it on the drum kit. Thank you. How yeah, important yeah. Is, is, is knowing other instruments or learning a little bit of another instrument uh, to you guys in, in the band? Uh, it definitely affects what I play. Like, just being able to like know how to play drums myself makes me approach playing the bass like a drummer almost. Hmm. Um, I can kind of anticipate what he's going to do on the drums better because I know just like what his limbs are going to have to do um, yeah. Right. Absolutely. What about you, Asher? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're all kind of aspiring drummers aside from JP. I'm still an aspiring <laughs> drummer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, it's, it's cool to be on drumming because I've watched so many of y'all's videos just as a fan. Um, cool. But, yeah, I mean, like having an understanding of rhythm in general is something that I really value on guitar um, because, I mean, we have one hand that's kind of strictly for hitting the damn thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of, oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. It's fine, um, <laughs> It's all good. Uh, but yeah, it's like, you know, understanding 
um, that you're also a drum. Uh, I think when Marcel said, like, you know, you play drums and your instrument. Um, so, like, you know, just playing, playing drums actually helps me understand how to, like, play rhythms and play guitar better and know where I fit in in the mix. Right. So. And, and, and JP, you play other instruments as well? I, I used to practice a lot of bass. Yeah. It's been a while, I'm not going to lie. I am a <laughs> subpar bass player at best. He's yeah. amazing. It's just not true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, similar reasons to them, like just understanding how it works. I, w I mean, personally, I would like to start studying again so that my theory and my chord uh, note knowledge is a little bit more like readily available. Right. There's a lot of stuff I studied at, at school. Like, I get it, but I, I don't... Since I was never proficient on a uh, melodic instrument, um, it just isn't like readily available. And now that we have a group that is so open to ideas and, you know, I can bring like a crappy idea and they'll make it somehow sound cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm inspired to, you know, go back that direction as well. Very cool. Very cool. Cool. Yeah. So next question I have for you are, um, it's kind of a two-parter. What are your biggest struggles as a band? And do you have any tools to help yourselves deal with that? Because you all have very individual lives as far as you all working musicians, right? Yeah. I mean, I got a list of struggles for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe the top three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of I kind of am the acting band manager in a sense. Yeah. I handle a lot of like, the admin logistical stuff. Um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of me enjoys it, actually, but that's where like 90% of the struggles really come in. I mean, we obviously, you know, every now and then we get stuck, like, I don't know what this song needs, I don't know what this section should be, like the song's not feeling right, we don't know why. Um, but that's kind of, I mean, that's not, you know, those aren't crises that really make me panic. Mm -hmm. um, We're always kind of developing <laughs> new ways of kind of getting around that problem, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, trying to be kind of cerebral about the writing process sometimes. Like, if it doesn't happen naturally, uh, we're trying to think of, you know, new ways to approach an idea or, or approach, like, making music in general. Um, so that's like the music side, which is a little bit easier for us, which I guess is a huge blessing. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, you know, we're, it's the biggest mystery in music since the beginning of music. It's like, you're a nobody band. How do you become a somebody band, you know, mm -hmm. like a self-sustaining band? And it's just like, I mean, booking shows. and like, we're, we, before, I was booking the Australia tour before we even had an album out. So I'm like, trust me, we're really good. Like, you know, <laughs> wow. I promise I have a lot of Instagram followers. So like, it's probably going to be cool. And, you know, you're just like totally <laughs> bullshitting, but there's no way to not do it. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, we just have to basically prove ourselves. Like, I would love for in like two years for like... A, everyone who's ever heard of any of us to know the band exists. Mm -hmm. And then to like really first, you know, reach out to the guitar and the bass and the drums community. And then, you know, in a year or two, I hope we start expanding outside of that and access the musician community and then just like, you know, civilians. So civilians. That's the civilians. Uh, number one. Yeah. That's the <laughs> that's the biggest challenge uh, in my mind. Because like so that and funding things. I mean, mm -hmm. just everything costs money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's it, man. And, and we're extremely grateful for opportunities like this to like play in front of a bunch of people and just, you know, th throw some crap at the wall and see what sticks. And maybe one in a thousand people are like, you know what, this band is on to something. <laughs> and and that's, a, that's a fan we'd be grateful to have, you know. That's I love it. it. I love it. Well, we're, uh, we're happy to share and, and hopefully try and expose you guys to some people who haven't seen you. I mean, that's what we love doing here. So, yeah, very cool. I'm going to take a couple questions from the community there, from uh, the Drumio side of things. Here's a question from PT3407. He asks, uh, how do you guys overcome stage fright or anxiety before performing? Ooh. Uh, I well, don't. Yes. Yeah. You don't? Really, nah. I'm normally like really nervous whenever I'm on stage. I just yeah. kind of take it. But, really? Yeah. And sometimes that energy can push you to places uh, that you've never been musically before. And especially in a band where we have to improv in front of people. <laughs> you know, that's like part of our mission statement, I guess, is to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I get super nervous sometimes. And I think the way that you can overcome that is um, just by trusting in your own process. I mean, we've spent so much time at this point, like, um, practicing our instruments and, uh, and 
really working on how to get around you know any obstacle we might we might face um, and also just trying to be in like a really present headspace JP Jed and I recently have been like trying to get into you know meditation a lot. band meditation um, sesh in the morning band meditation. We, we plan on doing it every morning oh. in Australia that's that's the goal very cool um, so if you meet us there we're gonna be hella zen yes <laughs> try especially us. by the end yeah. Aussies get ready um, but yeah, I mean, overcoming stage fright is is something that uh, you never fully do, maybe. Some some people might feel differently, but I don't feel like I'll ever fully be over it, and I don't really want to ever be fully over it, because it gives me some extra energy. Hmm. You know? That's a cool perspective. Yeah, you have to think of it. If it went all the way away, then it would kind of just feel like you're showing up for another day at work that you didn't mm. care about. You know? I mean, <laughs> it's, in a sense, the nerves sort of signifies that you really care a lot, maybe yeah. too much, you know? Yeah. Um, I'll add to what Asher said, a couple of things that I tried to keep in mind recently. Uh, this is a thought that came to me when I was doing the Generation X tour, which is a tour with Steve Vai and Zach Wilde and Tozan Abazi and Ingve Malmsteen and like these shredder guitar guys. <clears throat> it was like a three and a half hour show, lots of you know songs to remember and I had to learn them very quickly. So I would, I would get like, you know, I'd be playing and I would remember, it's amazing, your memory's amazing, it remembers, it remembers things you think sucked, like, amazingly, and just has a really tough time remembering, like, the good times, you know? Mm. Um, maybe that's, is that insight into my psyche there? <laughs> <laughs> Too real. Um, but, uh, no, there'd be, like, a little mistake that I was like, oh, that note was a lot, or, like, oh, I, I rimmed uh, something or whatever. I rushed that fill because it was with a click. And then I listen back uh, to like a video or like a YouTube clip somebody posted, and it would be like completely non like perceivable. It was just like even me listening, I'm like, oh, I, I remember messing up there, but like it, it just didn't come across, right? I mean, you're right. in this huge arena, and you're like, the drums are like just compressed and mic like crazy, and like you're noticing, you know, you're you're noticing. The better you get at your instrument, the better you get at seeing little indiscrepancies. Mm. So I call this, I call it the eye of the tiger. <laughs> like when you're when you're nervous, you're hypersensitive to those things. You're like looking out for these tiny indiscrepancies that would normally, if you're in the practice room alone, you wouldn't even notice because they're they actually don't matter. Right. But you start to notice them. And what I started doing on the tour is like when I would do that. Instead of like letting it you know, like sit with me for the next like eight bars and like we're gonna not mess up now, um, I would just be like, dude, it's all good. I have the eye of the tiger right now, right? Like I'm nervous. I have the eye of the tiger. Like no one saw that, right? Guaranteed. Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, if you completely train wreck a song, people are gonna notice. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but that helps me at least. Don't train wreck. That yeah. helps me at least like look past the little dumb stuff that like you get hung up on when you're playing. You know. Cool. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you from a member, Christetta, who's actually a drumming member too, by the way. Oh, I'm guitar oh, cool. as well. Yeah. Right. She says, um, how long, this is for you, Asher, oh, sure. how long uh, have you been kind of composing your lead melodies, and do you improvise them first and then notate them after, or do you simply just improvise them and try to remember them or record them or something? Um, I know it's a long, long question. How long do I, how long, uh, how long have, have you been, been composing? Yeah. Uh, composing in general, I think, has been... A big part of what I do since I started. I mean, I started playing classical guitar, but um, I got I got really into just like making up my own like pop punk songs or or whatever yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, and that was that was super fun. But um, writing is actually I feel like the biggest part of how I've grown um, as a player because uh, I always find more of the things that I want to do, which make me want to do them more. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, you kind of find your own limits within trying to explore new territory. So um, composing I've been doing I guess, since I started, which was, uh, wow, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, 18, 19 years ago. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, composing for a long time. Um, and when I'm writing melodies now, um, oftentimes I'll improvise something. Um, I try to sing a lot of things first. You probably won't hear me sing. Uh, in in person anytime, um, but I try to sing a lot of things because I feel like um, a big goal of mine is to make things feel familiar on some level, but also offer like a slightly different perspective. Um, so like accessible, but a little off the beaten path, you know, a little left of center. Um, so oftentimes I'll sing something and then record it, um, and then 
listen back and like be like, okay, well that was really great, but this little tiny section I feel like needs something. So that's that's a big part of how I write um, my melodies. Cool. Yeah. yeah, great question. Yeah, good question indeed. We have time for just a few more. And then, is it possible to maybe get you guys improv us out or something? Yeah. Awesome. Sure. That'd be great. Or a song. We have something left, don't we? We'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Here's a question from both Chuck L. and Steeler Fan from Drumia. They ask uh, basically the same question. Who are some of your guys' influences as a band? Mm -hmm. I, I love like a lot of classic rock, honestly. And even like... Just anything old, like Motown stuff, stuff from Stax. Uh, I like diving into like the history of like where a lot of dope music comes from. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, my what I play and what I listen to is actually, you know, not completely disconnected, but it's not like I'm listening to things just to gain drum inspiration. Um, to me, just like I want to listen to good music. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's changing. I, I go through phases pretty hard, and I'll like listen to one album for like two months straight. You know, I'm not the only thing, but like I'm gonna go ahead and say like 85 percent of the time. Yeah. Like the the new Chronics album is a reggae album that's really sick. I'm stoked for the new Saint Vincent album to come out. Um, there's a I've been listening to I love like piano trio music or just like solo piano music. Like Tigran Hamasian is amazing. Mm. Um, I love the bat. Plus, you know, like, dr I guess drum-wise, the, the mu music that I like drum-wise involves some amount of, like, freedom and creativity. Like, I love uh, Dave King from the Bat Plus, Darren King from Mute Math, who is not necessarily improvising, but doing super creative stuff on the drums that fits in a basically pop rock song. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, there, are, there are a lot, and it's always kind of shifting, but those are the big ones. Very cool. Asher, what about you? Uh, I was into a lot of different kinds of music, um, but I, I grew up, I guess I really got serious about music playing jazz, so I mean, and I never, I didn't like that many jazz guitar players, but uh, influences guitar-wise on me were um, some of my teachers, I guess mostly. Clint Strong is a big one. Um, I really learned a lot from him in high school. Um, then my favorite instructor I had at Berkeley was uh, David Tronzo. He really showed me a lot. Um, but music that I listen to now, I mean, like, I listen to a lot of, like, electronic kind of stuff. Um, I listen to a lot of, like, new music and a lot of older music, kind of like Jed, too. Like, I love listening to, um, there's this band, How uh, Hundred Waters, that I really dig listening to right now. Um, I really like listening to uh, Phoenix, a, yeah. you know, kind of dancey indie electronic band. Um, and I love Justin Vernon, he's also one of my biggest influences, um, both as, like, a musician and a producer. Uh, songwriter, uh, his melodies I think are really beautiful, and there's so much like passion and, and soul in what he does. Um, He's the guy from Bon Iver, for those that don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, bon Iver and Volcano Choir and all that great stuff. Um, but jazz stuff, I mean, Thelonious Monk, huge influence of mine. Um, I really love Lee Konitz. Uh, I really love um, Majumal, uh, Errol Garner. So my big influence. Also, cool. I think we, I can probably speak for all of us when I throw like a lot of our peers in there. Yeah. yeah. Like what our friends are doing in New York, some, like it's just some of the coolest stuff that's happening. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's like I mean, that's sort of like the underground bubbling and simmering that will hopefully soon, you know, simmer or boil over. Yeah. yeah it's really um, but yeah, drummer friends, musician friends of all sorts are like just on to some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. That's great, man. Yeah. And uh, one last thing, if I might add. Yeah. Um, I feel like we have some influences for the model of this band yeah. as well. Um, I mean, I always think about it as like, you know, Robert Glasper experiment, how he likes to collaborate with a lot of different artists, and he's really great at kind of curating um, groups of people to play music together. Um, you know, the Roots are really great at that, you know, doing an album with Elvis Costello, <laughs> yeah. you know, something like that, like that's super cool. Um, and DJs, you know, how they'll do lots of features that I feel like that's a pretty cool and like newer model, relatively speaking, um, that people are starting to explore and be more open to. Um, so that's pretty big for us, I think, too. Yeah. yeah. And I throw Hiatus Coyote in there, too. Not, I mean, musically, we're not really doing what they're doing, but they have done a really cool job of making like kind of really pretty 
interesting involved music like borderline musicians music but it's like accessible enough that like they'll play you know a thousand people at Brooklyn Bowl right you know, yeah a bunch of them are non-musicians it's like they've, they've done a really nice job straddling that line and it seems really natural it's like it's not like they have a formula you know they're just doing right. what they do right right mm-hmm Cool. Maybe one more question from... Yeah, I got uh, kind of a segue question here, depending on if you improv anything. Matthew asks, uh, do y'all just pick a key and start, or is it more to it than that? Uh, Lots of visual stuff. (laughs) I mean, luckily, Jed plays an instrument that I know how it works, so I can look over at him, and, I mean, he can't really see my neck right now, but... um, (laughs) Yeah, oftentimes it's just like, oh, cool, that's what you're doing. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when yeah. we're writing, there might be an idea that is the catalyst, but when we're improv like we just did, or like we might be about to, um, <laughs> uh, that, that's, there's no plan going into it. Oh, I'm excited to see this at the end. Oh, cool. It's going to be good. Do we have another song, or do we want to improv? It's up to you. Was there one I I can't remember. No, there's not. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be real, guys. I love it. So uh, I'll wrap things up here with um, um, a lot of people who are watching us uh, are asking, when am I going to see you in Australia? What are the dates? When am I going to see you in New York? Basically, my question for you to wrap all that into one is, what's next for you guys? What's next for Childish Shapes? Yeah, next is just, you know, slow and steady world domination. Really. Right. Yeah. So step one the farthest place possible from where we live, yeah. Australia, and then we'll start working our way back. So, yeah, I mean, we've played, this is our fourth show, if you consider this a show. Um, but, yeah, we get home for like two or three days to New York tomorrow, and then we go to Australia for this first tour. And on that tour, we're going to play Sydney, uh, Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth, and Christchurch, New Zealand. And we're also doing some clinics along the way in those cities, and we're also going to record, we have four days in the studio to record our second album. Wow. So we're trying to, I mean, we, we really just want to, you know, uh, it's not, I guess I want to say we want to have high output, but it's like we're writing a lot of stuff. We obviously just want it to be out, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So um, we're trying to, yeah, shorten the process between writing something cool and people hearing it as a finished product. So we want to release a lot more music, and we have the next two EPs or albums kind of like roughly planned as far as what we want to do. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll be playing Australia, get a lot of footage. We'll be going home. There's talk of other places. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up in mm-hmm. case, you know, it's still very much like under the, under the radar plans right now. So, yeah, I mean, we just want to start doing stuff. Shoot, festivals, anywhere. If you run a festival, a music festival, <laughs> you can email you me, Ad. <laughs> yeah. That's it. We just want to play. We're really proud of what we do, and we're really excited to share it with people. Love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks again for coming out. And then, you guys, if you're fo- watching these guys, you like what you're hearing, make sure you follow them. You can find them anywhere that there's music online or people, as you guys would say, childish japes. <laughs> and if you guys are watching this live, or even if you're watching this on YouTube and you like this format, this is our first time doing it, let us know. Send us an email, dave at drumio.com, Nate. Nathan at guitarlessons.com yep. and um, or leave a comment below this and uh, yeah is that good? Uh, that's awesome man. cool education inspiration exactly yeah. okay well thank you so much for coming out guys and we're going to leave because we want to watch this from in there but play us out alright <laughs> alright cheers St. Louis Blues and Sea boys <laughs>